Hi and uh, welcome to the third video on the countdown timer. In this video I'm going to talk about all the parts I didn't talk about in the first two uh, videos. And some of them are kind of out of right field odds and M parts that really make the program work a lot nicer. For instance uh, on the form, if we uh, double click on the form we go to the code behind and the default event handler for the form which is the form load and I have a this which re always represents the form on this level sometimes this represents something else but generally speaking it almost always represents the form itself and then I have a dot center to screen and what this code does is it when the program pops up it centers it on your computer screen which I got really tired of dragging it from the upper left corner all the time. <laughs> so I added that code. Then another odd and end part is this icon in the uh, upper left corner, which I changed to a custom icon, which almost doesn't matter because you can't really see it. But if you uh, come down to the uh, form uh, property pane, and go up to uh, icon and click on the ellipse you'll see the icon that I actually put on there in a size that's large enough to see kind of a cool icon I downloaded off the internet and I was hoping this icon would automatically be associated with the program but it's not I had to go through uh, several monkey moves to get it as the icon that would appear on the desktop. And basically what I had to do was create a shortcut which you, you do by right clicking on it and dragging it and then say create shortcut here. But I already did that so you don't want to do it again. And then you can change the icon on the shortcut. You've gone on the properties and you see there's a change icon button so you can then select a new icon. Unfortunately you can't directly change the icon on the EXE. The, uh, if you go into the properties of the EXE there's no change icon. It's kind of a bummer. But And on top of that if you create a shortcut you get this little arrow in the corner which I didn't really want but you can't win for losing. And while we're here, you also see the alarm dot wave, which is the sound that happens when the uh, timer runs out, when it goes to zero, so that you'll be jolted into awareness. And there's a, a couple interesting things about that. If we go down to the uh, timer component and then go to the events for the component, and double click on the one and only event, the uh, tick event, which I think I kept calling the click event. Less. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. But when you come down to the bottom, which is as far as we got in the last video, where we I auto decrement the uh, number of seconds, total number of seconds that are counting down, a global variable. I do an if to check if the total number of seconds is less than or equal to minus one and it has to be minus one rather than zero because I'm auto decrementing after I display uh, which I think generally works out a lot better and the first thing we want to do when the timer runs out is uh, with the timer object say stop because if we don't say stop right away we might get another tick event and it will run away from us so the first thing you want to do is stop the timer and the next thing I want to do is take the button the start button we use to start the timer and change the text in it to close and this has to do with what I was talking about before in the the button event handler is that based on what the text is in the button event uh, event handler the button actually does two different things so we're actually changing the functionality of, bu of the button by changing the text 
and then another interesting thing I had to do was create a new thread and put a message box inside this thread and the reason was I want to pop up a message box that says the uh, timer ran out you know times up but I also want to do this alarm I've been talking about that I play using the sound player and the trouble with popping up a message box is that it'll just hang there a message box is what is known as modal and modal means nothing happens in the system until you uh, you get rid of the modal object you get rid of the modal dialog box and so I have to click OK before the alarm starts playing which really misses the whole point of the alarm you know I want to hear the alarm if I'm off in the kitchen making a sandwich or something I don't want to have to click OK in order to have the alarm hear the alarm so I basically created a thread for the uh, message box uh, an anonymous thread via the new thread and then I do a new thread start to make it a well behaved thread and then I create an anonymous delegate and the delegates within these uh, angle brackets start here and end here and all the message box does is a message box show that says times up and then I need the parens to uh, match you know the before the delegate and before the new thread you know so that I have two sets of parens down here and then I have a dot start to start the thread so this code basically lets us get around the message box by default being modal it actually simulates it being a modeless message box in order to not have to press OK in order to hear the alarm and then I uh, allocate a new sound player SP object instantiate it and pass the uh, wave file alarm.wave which is what we saw on that directory previously and this also I downloaded off the internet it's, it's almost too powerful an alarm I, you can put any alarm you want in an alarm.wave needless to say and whatever you put in it will be the uh, sound you hear and then I do a uh, sound player dot play which is the asynchronous play we don't really need synchronous for this one unlike the last video talking about sound player and I think that's pretty much it that's the what happens when the timer runs out if we go back now to the uh, button now the code makes sense where we do uh, if the uh, text of the button is equal to start we do this calculation to create the total number of seconds defined in the uh, numeric up downs or spin boxes and then we start the uh, timer which decrements this uh, global total number of seconds but that's if the text says start but if the text says close which happens when the timer runs out uh, basically what we do is stop the sound player which is blessed relief from this alarm and then we close the window so that the form closes itself at this point so the button functions entirely differently based on what the text in the button is well, if we compile and run this program you notice it's in the center of the screen now which is kind of nice and uh, go use the spin, spin box to go up 10 seconds since the 10 is selected in the radio buttons and we do a start I have the sound somewhat turned down because I don't want to wake up everybody in the house <laughs> That's the alarm. I actually had it on headphones initially, so we didn't even hear it. But we can close the message box by clicking OK, and then we can close the uh, application itself 
by uh, pressing the now close button, what used to be the start button, which will also turn off the sound. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, this video, and learned a lot. And you really need to go back and look at the other two videos for the whole thing to make sense. And uh, I'll see you next uh, tutorial, and I'd appreciate it if you subscribe.